here with FBC Sports. Only two teams have confirmed their place in the semi-finals of the Inc. Mobile BOG. Lambasa and Ba, who meet in the next 10 minutes, will be joined by two of either Nandi, Lautoka or Suva. Earlier this afternoon, Nandi got back to its winning ways, beating Navua 2-0. Nandi, which lost 3-1 to Latoka last night, had to fight hard to get the win. Meanwhile, Nandi is now waiting for the result of a protest it filed against Latoka after the loss. Meanwhile, the Premier Division games got underway at the BOG this morning. One of the top bets, Tailebu Naita Siri, got off to a winning start, beating Rakiraki 2-0. We're pretty sure we're going to beat Nasinu and uh, we'll be uh, looking forward to play finals on Sunday. In another premier encounter, Lamy beat Vatukola 2-1. I think it's looking good. Uh, the plan that we had uh, to put two strikers in the front and uh, use 4 for 2 formation is paid off. And, um, uh, you know, uh, playing league games and stuff like that, we didn't have a big field. Eh? So coming out here is a bigger field, and uh, we decided to use uh, two work, uh, strikers in the front and it paid off. With the action heating up at Churchill Park, we now cross live to Christopher Chan. Chris, Thank you, first Jamie. up, tell us what's the latest yeah, with Herbert. Nandi's protest against Latoka protest filed by Nandi against Lotoka, we can safely say or unofficially say that Lotoka's won or it's in their favour. Another development lately, Rewas filed a complaint against Lambasa player Posiano Calisito, which could probably change the standings for the semi-finals tomorrow. We've got FBC sports commentator Raymond Stodak with us, who's going to give us an in-depth look into the next match, which is between Ba and Lambasa. Raymond, who's your pick for the next match, Ba taking on Lambasa? I think injuries have started creeping into the um, bar side. Likewise, uh, with the uh, Lambasa side, they've got their second choice goalkeeper that uh, will be. I think they're taking this game in a not so serious uh, manner, but they've got the best lineup, uh, the Lambasa side. But l looking on uh, yesterday's performance, bar certainly looks a uh, good bet. Uh, already have qualified for the semi finals. They look good in that uh, game there, although they will be missing one or two of their players. Osea Vakatalasau is in the injury list, but certainly looking good, the, the bar side, in that next match. Following that is the last match of the day between Lutoka and Suva. Lutoka looked in brilliant form yesterday, beating Nandi three goals to one. Uh, Raymond, you can probably think that uh, Lutoka is already in the semi-finals? Yeah, we can say Lutoka is in the semi-finals. And as you said, uh, the Nandi officials threw away all what they had brought as evidence into the rubbish bin uh, in that protest. Uh, yeah, Lutoka looked uh, the best team of the day yesterday, in fact, uh, against a Nandi side that came into the uh, tournament with seven games in a row uh, that they haven't lost. Yeah, Lutoka looked good. Suva need to win win this game. I think Suba will be relying heavily on their new recruit, Sunny Issa, to do the wonders for them. But on yesterday's performance, Lotoka looked very good for a semi-final. But like we've been talking about the uh, protests or the complaint that by the Rewa side, so things could change for the semi-finals tomorrow as far as uh, the Bar and Lambasa pool is concerned. But definitely, Lotoka look a very good bet uh, to go through to the semi-finals tomorrow. So Protest pending will give, keep you updated on Radio Fiji 2 with the voice of soccer, Raymond Stoddard. Back to you in the studios. Thank you, Jamie. Vinaka Raymond, Vinaka Chris. Moving on with our sports news. The Fiji national under-17 cricket side has been selected and they're now gearing up for the East Asia Pacific under-17 competition in Lautoka next month. The core of the team is made up of Suva-based players, while six come from the Lao group. Four of the youngsters will wear our national colours for the first time. They're all under the guidance of former Fiji cricket captain, Josefa Rika. Until the weather improves, these young cricketers will be focusing on fitness and come August, they'll play against Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea. The countdown to the London Olympics is well underway. With the opening tomorrow morning, the Olympic torch has been making the rounds, has been making rounds around the capital. Not a bad crowd for 6.40 in the morning, but it's been like this wherever the torch has gone on its marathon 69-day journey across the country. 
On Thursday, its last full day on display before the games begin, and in the heart of London. Starting here in Camden Town, and on past some of the host city's most iconic landmarks. Here, through huge crowds outside the Bank of England, here in the shadow of St Paul's Cathedral. The torch is carried by a combination of the famous, here a Bollywood film star, and ordinary members of the local community. On this bridge over the River Thames, the flame was held aloft by Paralympic basketball medalist Ade Adepatan. Wherever the torch has gone, enormous crowds have turned out. It's clear that away from the concerns about security, transport chaos and corporate sponsorship and the media and political world, out here on ground level, the British people, it's clear, is very excited at the prospect of London 2012. I think it does kind of win you over. Obviously, we've all seen all the political problems that there are around it, and I have my own personal views on that. But when you're actually here, it does become very exciting. What did you think of that? It was fabulous. What's the big deal? Why did you come? Just see the torch. Yeah. Like your home Olympics. It's so cool. Yeah. It's like a momentous occasion for people who live in London. All day, the torch procession continued through packed streets. It was carried through Trafalgar Square and then into number 10 Downing Street, home of the Prime Minister. It even had a royal reception at Buckingham Palace, where it was greeted by Princes William, Harry and the Duchess of Cambridge. And news just to hand, Lambasa has lost the three points it got from the Rio win last weekend. You can find out more on Radio Fiji 2.